we all know about column charts but what about column column charts here is one such chart in this chart we are exploring the monthly contribution of each of our states as well as the overall figure with some cool labels on the top in this video let me explain how you can create such an amazing fun chart with your data in microsoft excel let's go so here is the data for our chart as you can see we have got five states and six months worth of data and for each month we know how many tons of chocolate we have shipped to these states and i have created this chart but let's build everything from scratch so i'm going to go to this page here where i have got just the raw data and the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to select my data as it is so you would want some columns and rows of data so this is kind of perfect for any pivot tables from which your data is coming or this sort of data that happens to be there in most business situations then we are going to go into insert and select the column chart now even though i'm showing it from column chart this technique works for bar charts as well so you could think of this as a column column chart or bar bar chart let's go with column because we have got a time component involved and let's add that so by default this is how excel is going to show it each state will be one column and each one each month will be one chunk of columns now what we want is while this is good to understand how each state is performing across the time we won't know what is the total volume of chocolates we are shipping every month so we would want to add a column behind this something like that that kind of tells us what that total value is as well as add some annotations for storytelling so to do that i have set up some extra cells underneath to calculate the monthly totals this would be nothing but a sum function for those months and we will have that number and i can just drag this and i'll have individual monthly sums while we are there let's also calculate what is the maximum value in each month because then we could use that for storytelling so we'll use the max function and calculate the max of each month and once we know the max we want to know what state it belongs to so for example here the maximum is 750 and that corresponds to kerala here so we would want to know the name of the state printed directly here so that kl should go there this kind of a thing can be done with an x lookup or v lookup so i'm going to use x lookup look up the max value among the state values and get the name of the state everything can remain relative but the state name has to stay in the column c so we'll select this portion of the reference and press f4 to lock it let's close the bracket and we will get kl now if i drag this formula sideways i'll see the corresponding maximums as well as the state names so ap tn ap tg like that we'll worry about the data label towards the end for now all the setup is done so let's go ahead and add this total to the chart one way to do this is you can select the entire series ctrl c to copy select the chart and ctrl v to paste this way you're pasting an extra series into the chart and now that is also part of the visual itself but this time the total is actually added as an extra column in each of the monthly chunks now what we want is we want to take that column and move it behind these five and kind of make it like a big overarching column kind of thing this sort of a thing can be done by using combination chart feature of excel so if you've never done this this is where you're going to open a whole plethora of opportunities and ways to work with the data so what you want to do is once this setup is done you can right click on any of the columns and go to change series chart type this is going to open a custom combination dialog from where you can kind of select how you want to combine this i'm going to expand this screen so we could actually see now what we want is we want to keep the total as it is and the rest of the individual state components we want to move them to secondary axis this way the total will stay in the back and all the secondary axis elements will be drawn in the front so i'm gonna check these boxes don't worry how the chart looks while we are doing this process so once you finish you should have something like this the orange bars behind are the totals and the individual columns appear in the front once this step is done click ok and 
our chart is now kind of ready it doesn't look as pretty but it is ready so let's go ahead and format everything first up i'm going to select any of the state columns itself not the total and right click and go to format data series this is going to open up the format dialog box on the side panel here and from here let's adjust the gap width the gap width tells excel how much gap to leave between two chunks of series so right now it is set to something like 219 percent i'm going to change this to 100 percent so that the gap is a little less and the overlap i'm going to set this to zero percent so that the columns are touching each other next we will select the total column and go to the gap width and this gap width we are going to set to 20 percent if you're thinking why 20 percent that's because we have got five states. So if five states have 100% gap, one should have 20%. So now what happens is the background column will be exactly as wide as these five columns put together. Make sense? Next, we want to tidy this up so that we can kind of actually see the background along with the foreground elements. So for this, you can do a few things. For example, as we move this to secondary axis, you can see that the primary axis goes from zero to 3,500, whereas the secondary one goes only from zero to 1,200. This is because the maximum value in any month for any state is around thousand or something like that so what we can do is we can select this axis and scale it a little bit more so that the states kind of go sit inside the column snugly so for this we can go into the axis options and set the maximum from 1200 to something like 2500 so that the columns are now inside the bigger column you can actually match this value with the 3500 as well the only limitation of this approach is there is no way to automate this so if you have got new data and the data values go a little bit over then you need to come back and adjust these access maximum values every time so that everything fits inside but that's a small price to pay for such an awesome fun looking column column chart all right so we're going to set this to 2500 and now select these bigger columns and i'm going to go into fill color and change the color to a dull color like that you could also experiment with these colors for example you could try a gradient fill like that which will give you a nice darker to lighter color shading in the background i'm gonna leave the gradient fill because it looks more fun next up i'm gonna select the legend itself while the legend is telling me what is happening it is at the bottom and that's not the good place for the legend so what we will do is we will want to move the legend up there so for this i'm gonna select the legend go to legend format legend options here go there and set it on the top and that comes up there while we are here you may want to take out a specific legend element such as total or leave it as it is it doesn't really matter i'm gonna just leave it and make it big enough so that there is no word wrap going on and show it like that i also noticed that the legend is actually showing both the state name and the abbreviation which is kind of redundant so i'm going to adjust this quickly i'll go right click on this chart go to select data and these are all the series values uh, we'll need to adjust them uh, it is coming from both columns b and c i'm going to just adjust this to b and we'll repeat that for all of them so that the legend doesn't really state the full state name just the two letter abbreviation now let's go ahead and make it small enough so we can see that legend there Next up, what we want is we want to show some storytelling here. There's many ways to tell this story. So for example, here in the demo, what I wanted to show is I want to know what the total value itself is for the month, as well as which state has the highest export or highest shipment of chocolates happening. So in the first month of Jan, it is Kerala. Then you have Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, Tamil Nadu, etc. So to do this, we will need to construct a data label. The data label will be constructed here and then it will be linked to the chart. So here we are going to write a formula that basically takes these three values and constructs a data label. The data label should essentially have this kind of a format. It should say 2005. That's because that's how many tons of chocolate we shipped. Next line. And then it should have a crown symbol or some other symbol to celebrate uh, the top state so some symbol then state name kl and within brackets how much was that number so it's 750 
that number goes there. So this is the format of the data label. Uh, let's construct this here. We are going to start with 2005. So we'll take this value D12 ampersand and we want to go to the next line. So for this, you can use char 10, which is the new line character. This is not going to sh be shown on the screen, but when the chart sees it, it's going to print it in the next line. So char 10 and then we want the state name, but before that we want to have some sort of a symbol to indicate that this is the best performing state in that particular month. There's lots of different symbols that you could use for to get the symbols. You're going to open double quotes and then press windows and dot keys together to bring up the emoji keypad. From here, you can select emojis. You can see that I've already selected crown emoji. You can search for this. So for example, you can search for top or you can search for a cup or trophy. Let's go with trophy this time. So I'm going to insert the trophy emoji. Don't worry, it looks in black and white here, but when it is printed on the chart, it's going to look in color. So trophy emoji ampersand and then the name of the state ampersand within double quotes. We're going to open a bracket and bring the 750 there. Close bracket. So you can see that 2005 KL 750. Now, while I'm seeing this, I do notice one problem with this, which is the 2005 just looks like four digits instead of two comma zero zero five. That's probably how we want to see it. So you may want to take the D12 and use text formula text of D12 in. So I'm going to use this format, the format code hash comma hash hash zero comma dot zero K is going to take the number and round it to thousands and print it in 2.0 K like that. So you'll get 2.0 K. And when I drag this, I'll get it for every month, the corresponding values. So far, so good. So now that these labels are generated, let's link them to the chart. We're going to select this series again and use the plus button here to add data labels. The default labels will be as per the original value. So you'll see that these labels are nothing but these values. So now what we want is we want to tell Excel that the label should not be here. It should be from here to do that. Select the labels and go to format data label option. Once you open the format panel, it sticks around there. So you can just switch to whatever component of the chart and go to that relevant formatting and go to the label options. And we are going to use the value from cells option. This is going to let you pick any arbitrary values in your spreadsheet and link them as data labels. So we're going to select that and point to this range and click OK. And we are going to disable the original value itself. We no longer need that. And our labels are now here. I can adjust the text size, make it bold. And let's take this title and move it to the side. And let's write the title as March is our best month. We're going to adjust this and make it bold. And there is our fun column column chart. Do you like it? I really like this technique because it lets you not only see monthly comparisons, but also understand the overall picture. One of the limitations of individual clustered column charts or clustered bar charts is that while do, they do tell us what happened individually, they don't tell us what happened at an overall level. So this fixes that problem. I'm going to show you a few more variations of this. They're not as polished as this, but I kind of played around with this idea just to see what would work better. So this is the alternative number two here. What we are doing is using the columns as they are, but this, the bigger column is shown towards the negative side. So you can see that the axis is actually going negative. It's not the, the amounts are not negative. It's just that instead of overlapping one with another, we are using the reflection kind of a technique to show the values. So this way uh, you, you don't lose readability and you can kind of keep everything as it is and communicate better with this kind of a technique. You do need to synchronize the axis. So that means the minimum and maximum need to match. Otherwise the zeros won't line up. And here is another variation that I tried. Uh, I didn't really like this because it was while it is showing me what has happened, uh, both uh, cluster as well as stack. It's uh, too much hard to read with so many colors and with five values that this much, if you have got like six or 10 different product categories or something, then it's going to look even more confusing and complicated. Uh, but nevertheless, it does let you compare 
individually as well as an overall level um, in in this uh, i'm using again a different kind of axis scaling uh, so that the stacked columns can be kind of lifted above the actual values so which one do you like uh, personally i like this one because it's easier to build and there's not much complication and with a little bit of labeling it does enhance the storytelling tremendously and lets you explore the data and see both individual contributions as well as overall monthly trends let me know what your favorites is in the comments as well as how you would address this problem and how you would make the visualizations for this kind of data in the comments as well I'll catch you again somewhere else. Bye.